Guess who's Bizak? Your boy Rome Bizak, aka Mr. Crack a Brick, turn a 40 to a half a brick. Look, I mastered this. You can smell it once the plastic. <laughs> Yo, it's your boy, Mr. Rome, man. Right back like I never left. You know what I'm saying? Can't lie to y'all, man. I missed y'all. I know it's only been like a day or so, but look, I like coming through and dropping this cowboy knowledge on y'all. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's a lot of false narratives floating in the streets. I got to come through and, and drop knowledge. You know, um, and not to be funny, it's a lot to talk about. It's only been a day or two since I said something, and it's a lot to talk about. You know what I'm saying? One of the first things I want to touch on, um, the 3,000-yard receivers. I know I touched on it a little earlier, and, I, you know, like I was saying last video, I guess I'm, uh, the video or two, I guess I'm a prophet. Because, um, yeah, that hit the news cycle heavy yesterday. And I saw everybody from Lewis Riddick to Max Kellerman, um, Colin Cowherd, Skip Bayless, everybody touching on the 1,000-yard receivers. And, and I'm hearing, of course, you know, when it comes to Dallas, a lot of negativity, why, why it can't be done. Um, you know what I'm saying? But what I did see today that caught my attention, and I was like, oh, okay. All right. My boy Zeke came through and was like, look, we're going to have 3,000-yard receivers, but I'm going to eat too. Everybody's going to eat. And Zeke ain't lying. Everybody will eat. You know what I'm saying? Um, like I said the other day. Um, well, actually, I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm gonna tell you why why three thousand yard receivers make sense. There's four reasons. Four real easy reasons. Check it out. Reason number one: Dakota. Reason number two: Amari. Reason number three. Gallup. Reason number four, CD. That's right. It ain't that more deeper than that. That's it. That's why. That's the four reasons. I don't really need to go in depth. I've been running down the reasons over my last, what, 10, 11 videos? Those are the reasons why we're going over a thousand. Like, look, we was, we was this close last time. And Zeke had 1,300. So I don't understand why people think that this ain't possible. Especially with a more aggressive play caller. We almost got 3,000 yard receivers last year with a conservative coach. We got Mike McCarthy now. It's not that difficult to, to understand why we are going to have 3,000 yard receivers and a back that gets 1,200 and four to 500 catch. And Tony Pollard's probably going to get five to 600 yards. And he's probably going to catch for two to 300. Blake Jarwin's going to go for like seven, 800. Dak's going to get, Dak's going over 5,000 this year. It's not even that hard. That was close last year, like I said, with a conservative coach. So let's go ahead and just lay that to bed. The whole 3,000-yard receivers thing is probably not that difficult. If you can almost get 3,000-yard receivers with Jason Garrett, when you got C.D. Lamb now, and you got a, 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 a extra year of experience with Tony Pollard, and you got a veteran now in Zeke Elliott, a veteran in Dak Prescott, like, what do you think is going to happen? The game is slowing down, slowing down. Now Dak's just picking his spots. He's picking people apart. You know what I'm saying? The touch he's putting on the football is uncanny. And I, got, I came across some footage today. Um, pretty substantial. I'm going to do a Dak touch throw breakdown real soon. Y'all let me know what y'all think about that. I got I to... Gotta, um, like a stockpile of footage of showing how good Dak is with throwing the ball, um, especially with deep throws. His touch is uncanny. It's not even close. So, yeah, I'm going to do that soon. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to do that real soon. There's no take integrity floating around the Internet, like floating around the airwaves. I don't know what you want to call it. The four-letter network, the three-letter network, it's just bias. Because if I hear Lewis Riddick come out one more time with some Dak hate and how this team runs through Zeke, like, shut up, man. Just shut up. The team don't run through Zeke no more. And I love Zeke, but it don't. It just don't. What was the Zeke running, the team running through Zeke in the playoffs versus the Rams? Love you, Zeke, but come on, man. 40 yards? Nah, dog. Where was Zeke running, the, the team running through Zeke last year versus the Eagles? He was healthy. We could have just ran the ball down their throat. Where was Zeke? Running through um, the, the team, running through Zeke versus the Patriots. 
or versus any of those other teams we took L's to last year. The Zeke runs through, so you put, your, put the team on your back and get us some W's. I can't fault Zeke because you can't do that as a back, but once or twice a year. And when you're predictable like Jason Garrett is, it's hard for Zeke to do anything. So that's why I can't blame Zeke too much because Zeke does his part. But they, they, they used to just give it to Zeke and just be like, all right, run straight. There was no motions, no, 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 no multiple formations. Like th this wasn't the, the San Francisco 49ers offense where, you know what I'm saying, most of them were getting so many good carries because they would find a way to get them the ball on unpredictable downs. You know what I'm saying? Good line shifts. You know what I'm saying? Good counters and things like that. Great blocking schemes. They just give it to Zeke and be like, all right, man, do, do your thing. I can't really get mad at Zeke. You know what I'm saying? But I'm tired of hearing that it runs through Zeke. Lewis Riddick, shut up. Just shut up. I'm tired of you. I'm tired of Mike's Kellerman. I'm tired of everybody. You know what I'm saying? Because the, the point is old. Give me something else besides it runs through Zeke. Why does it run through Zeke? Give me some points on why it runs through Zeke. Anybody out there, let me know why it can run through Zeke. Tell me why the team does better when it runs through Zeke. Show me a major game that we played in where running through Zeke won us the game. And not 2016. And I love Zeke. Zeke's a very important focal point of his offense. But you can't put it all on him, especially not with that vanilla offense. Now, maybe this year we can run a couple of games through Zeke. But the, the, the team runs through four. Rain. Dakota Prescott. That's who the team runs through. You know? So let's put that to bed. The team runs through four. Everybody going to eat, as Zeke said. But the team runs through four. As far as D-line, you know, when you got D-Law, you got my boy um, Dontari Poe, Neville Gallimore, um, not the biggest fan of Tristan Hill. He got to show me. You're going to have to show me because Tristan Hill can stay home the way he was playing. Um, but Neville Gallimore, um, Tyron Crawford, Alden Smith, and my boy Randy Gregory. Now, I know he ain't on the team yet. I know what I just said. But I really think Randy Gregory putting the pressure on and they're going to have to reinstate him because they don't have a legitimate reason not to. Um, he started adding people today on Twitter. And, um, well, um yesterday on Twitter, and he just letting people know, like, look, man, I did everything I'm supposed to be doing. I'm tired of waiting. I'm tired of playing. Randy Gregory is a difference maker. Randy Gregory, the type of dude that if he plays 16 games uninhibited, he's getting you 16 sacks. He almost worked for sack a game. He's that talented. You know, I know notwithstanding the weed stuff he was dealing with before, but that's over with. You know, he ain't got to worry about those type of doldrums if he can just get past the NFLPA plan. Go ahead and reinstate my boy. Put him back on the squad because he got stuff to do. You know what I'm saying? So I think Randy Gregory is going to be back. Um, I think he'll be back by, by, by game one. He been around the team. He familiarizing himself with everybody, um, with everything that's going on. I think that um, they definitely been giving him everything that he needs to know. Um, but... I would love for him to be a part of training camp. I know it's a short training camp, but I would love for him to get out there and really just put in a little work. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's important. Um, but other than that, man, look, the weekend is upon us. And, yeah, with training camp beginning, the, the camp battles is about to begin. Um, you got my boy CD out here giving quotes, saying he just want to be another target for Dak. I love his humble approach. He know how nice he is. But he's not trying to ruffle no feathers. You know what I'm saying? I like the cohesion my team is showing. You know what I'm saying? I like Zeke coming out and saying everyone's going to eat. You know what I'm saying? Just letting people know that, look, I'm not out here. I'm not going to ruffle no feathers. I know Mike is Mike McCarthy is known for being a passing coach and pass-centric and not be, focusing on the running game. But Zeke is letting everybody know he's not tripping. He's going to get his. Everybody's going to get theirs. Um, CD coming out and just letting people know, you know what I'm saying? Look, I just want to be a target for Dak. And that's all I'm worried about. Then you got Amari coming out and saying, I think we can have 3,000-yard receivers. You know what I'm saying? And y'all already know that Gallup is humble. So, you know, our, our, our main offensive weapons outside of Dak Prescott are all humble and focused on team concept. That's important. 
know what I'm saying? You heard Mike when he said everything we going to do is about winning. Everything we do is about winning. So it's not about can I get my numbers this year. Them years, is that, that's over. Dak threw for 4,900. It ain't about his stats. It ain't about Zeke's stats. It ain't about getting CD 1,000. All that stuff will come with cohesion, with focus. And I think that the team is focused. I think that we locked in. I think we tired of the disrespect, especially from the idiots that you hear on the Four Letter Networks. It's I can't really even explain how old it is. You know what I'm saying? I'm tired of the disrespect from the Eagles content creators. I hear one of them today talking about how <laughs> talking about how you're not worried about CD Lamb. Yes, you are. You know who you is too. You worried about CD? I know you are because you wish you drafted him. I saw your faces. I saw all y'all faces on draft night when y'all put y'all took Rhaegar and your feelings because you wanted CD. You wanted Justin Jefferson. You ain't get him. You wanted IU. You wanted anybody. You ain't want Rhaegar. And then you flip script. And then the next day, I saw all of y'all hearts sink when y'all took Jalen Hurts. Y'all, y'all was a mo y'all was hurt. Y'all was Carl Thomas. All of y'all was emotional. I saw it. I, the faces was. And all I heard was, yo, Howie Roseman can't draft. Oh, no. And then I, I see you slowly, but surely start to build your confidence up over the last couple months. And now, now Howie Roseman is genius. Man, fuck out of here. Y'all know. Y'all all know how y'all was feeling on draft night. Especially the second day. Emotional, Carl Thomas. But it's all good though. Because the boy y'all wanted to draft, he rocking this.